You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 12th of August. Terrorists target civilian in India's Jammu and Kashmir. One migrant worker shot dead. Sri Lanka's ousted president Gotabaya Rajapaksa arrives in Thailand for temporary stay. And devotees in Nepal and India offer prayers to mark auspicious full moon day. And now for all the details. A migrant laborer was shot dead by terrorists in Badipora district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Friday, while a police personnel was injured in a separate terror attack in Anantanag district. This came a day after four soldiers were killed in action while two terrorists were gunned down in an attack on an army post in the Union Territory. A migrant laborer was shot dead by terrorists in Bandipura district of India's Jammu and Kashmir late Thursday night. Police said on Friday amid heightened security ahead of India's Independence Day. Terrorists fired upon the victim identified as Mohammad Amrez, a migrant laborer from eastern Bihar state, on the intervening night of August 11 and 12 in Bandipura. He was rushed to a hospital for treatment, but he succumbed to his injuries on Friday. Then he said, we don't see him, he's not here. We said, we'll go to the bathroom. When he went to the bathroom, he saw the blood on the ground, then he came to the bathroom, then he came to the bathroom, then he came to the army, then he came to the bathroom. हाजन ले गए हाजन में दो इंजेक्शन लगवाया बोला श्रीनगर ले जाओ श्रीनगर आते आते रास्ते में दम तोड़ दिया फिर सुमल में लेकर आया On Friday afternoon, a police personnel was also injured in a separate terrorist attack on a joint party of police and paramilitary CRPF in Bijbehara in Anantnag district. The area was cordoned off and searches were underway till the last reports came in. Meanwhile, India's foreign ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi on Friday said. It is regrettable that China delayed a proposal by India and the US at the UN Security Council to sanction Abdul Rauf Azhar, deputy commander of Jaish e Mohammed. Bagchi said double standards and continuing politicization have rendered credibility of sanctions committee at an all-time low. Azhar is blamed for terror incidents including the attack on the Indian Parliament in 2001 and the Pathan Court Air Force Base attack in 2016. As India celebrates its 75th Independence Day this month, flag rallies and walkathons were organized on Friday across the country as part of the Har Ghar Taranga campaign. The initiative aims to encourage every citizen to bring home the tricolor national flag and hoist it with pride to mark the occasion. Amid nationwide celebrations to commemorate the 75th Independence Day, personnel of India's paramilitary CRPF Central Reserve Police Force held a Tiranga or tricolor national flag rally in capital New Delhi on Friday. The CRPF personnel along with residents marched in the city in the rally as part of the Har Ghar Tiranga campaign launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to encourage every citizen to bring home the tricolor and hoist it with pride to mark Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the 75 years of independence from British rule. Several other events are also being organized across the country to commemorate the occasion and to celebrate the glorious history of India's people, culture and achievements. As we all know, the Azadi is our 75 years old and in the whole country, the Azadi is our 75 years old. आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव हम लोग मना रहे हैं इसी के सिलसिले में हमारे माननीय प्रधानमंत्री महोदय ने पूरे देश से आह्वान किया है इन इंडिया नॉर्दर्न जम्मू एंड कश्मीर टेरिटरी अथॉरिटीज ऑर्गेनाइज अ तिरंगा शिकारा रैली एट द फेमस डल लेक इन श्रीनगर सिटी ऑन फ्राइडे ट्रेडिशनल हाउस बोर्ड शिकारा वेर डेकोरेटेड विद नेशनल फ्लैग्स एज पार्ट ऑफ द इनिशियटिव 
the demand for the Indian national flag has seen a significant rise ahead of the Independence Day celebrations on August 15. India won its independence from the British in 1947, but was divided into two separate nations, Hindu-majority India and Muslim-majority Pakistan, after a bloody partition. In news from Pakistan, a court in Pakistani capital Islamabad on Friday ordered judicial remand for PTI leader Shahbaz Gill in a sedition case while rejecting plea for extension of his physical remand. Gill, who was produced before the court after a two-day police custody, alleged that he was tortured and said he was being politically victimized. Opposition Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf PTI leader Shahbaz Gill alleged political victimization after he was sent to jail on judicial remand by a court in Islamabad on Friday in a sedition case. Gill was produced before the court after the completion of his two day physical remand. The court, however, rejected the prosecution's plea seeking an extension in physical remand of Gill, who has been accused of inciting mutiny among Pakistan army ranks and inciting public against state institutions while speaking on a TV news channel. Denying the charges, Gill said a sensible Pakistani can never speak against the army. Former Premier and PTI Party Chief Imran Khan took to Twitter and said that he strongly condemns the torture being inflicted on Shahbaz Gill. A climate of fear is being spread to make people kowtow before cabal of crooks, he said. Khan had earlier blamed the coalition government for creating rift between his party and the army following Gill's arrest. In news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan remains the only country in the world where girls are banned from going to high school. The Ministry of Education earlier cited that issues with the girls' educational curriculum are the cause for the delay in reopening of schools. Islamic Emirates spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid has now said that religious issues are the reason for closed girls' schools. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan in March this year announced that female secondary schools would reopen since its closure last year when the group took over the country. The Taliban, however, reversed its decision on the very morning it was supposed to reopen, leaving many girls who had turned up excitedly for school disheartened. The closure of girls' schools above six grades since last year raised condemnation from inside and outside of Afghanistan. Facing pressure over the issue, the Ministry of Education recently said that issues with the girls' educational curriculum are the cause for the delay in reopening of the schools. Islamic Emirates spokesman Zebuhullah Mujahid has now said that schools for female students are closed for religious issues and that there is a need for agreement of Islamic scholars on this matter. In an interview with RTA TV on Thursday, Mujahid said that efforts are underway by the Islamic Emirate leadership to reopen the schools. Opposing the decision of the Islamic clerics regarding the schools will have negative consequences, he added. The Taliban's treatment of girls and women is one of the main reasons why the international community refuses to recognize Afghanistan's new rulers, cutting off billions of dollars in aid and exacerbating an economic crisis. Thousands of Afghans fled the country in the chaotic days that followed the hardline Islamist Taliban's military conquest on August 15 last year. Rights activist Masuda Kohistani managed to flee the country, but her mother and more than a dozen other family members did not make it. One year on, she shares her ordeal and pain of separation from her family and home. As thousands of Afghans crowded outside Kabul airport a year ago, desperately trying to escape the Taliban, Masoda Kohistani managed to fight her way onto a foreign military flight bound for the Gulf on August 21 and ended up in Spain a day later. Her mother and more than a dozen other family members did not make it. They were left behind on the tarmac, Kohistani recall, so as well as dealing with the pain of separation from her family and home, the 41-year-old right activist, who is single, is copying with a crushing sense of guilt. Attempts to bring her family out later failed due to their lack of travel documents and funds. 
During an emotionally draining video call from her family back in Kabul, Kohistani told her mother from Salamanca, a city west of Madrid, wish I could be by your side, but I can't until God opens a door for us. Kohistani, speaking from her apartment in Spain, said she had her refugee status confirmed valid for five years. But she has been jobless since she arrived in Spain, struggling to find work opportunities, mainly because of the language barrier. Life is a little bit uh, difficult for me because I left all my family. But uh, regarding to the security uh, situation in these things, it is better than, Afga than Afghanistan for me in here. In Kabul, Kohistani's sister and now wheelchair-bound mother said the Taliban continued to conduct surprise inspection of their family home to check if the daughter who fled had returned from Spain. An official from the Interior Ministry denied accusations the Taliban had conducted searches at the home. Despite all the challenges and her family's appeal for her to quit, Kohistani never stops her activism to raise awareness of the plight of the Afghan women back at home. She has been active in social media and taking part in various discussions and conferences about the situation in Afghanistan. Former Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa arrived in Thailand on Thursday after weeks of seeking shelter in Singapore following his ouster and fleeing the island nation last month amid mass protests. Thai authorities said Gotabaya had no intention of seeking political asylum and would only stay temporarily. Former Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa arrived in Thailand on Thursday as he seeks temporary shelter in a second Southeast Asian country after fleeing his island nation last month amid mass protests. Rajapaksa arrived at Bangkok's Don Muang Airport on a chartered flight from Singapore. He is expected to stay temporarily in Thailand after fleeing Sri Lanka for Singapore on July 14. Thai authorities said the former military officer, who is the first Sri Lankan head of state to quit mid-term, had no intention of seeking political asylum and would only stay temporarily. Godabaya resigned from office shortly after following unprecedented unrest over his government's handling of the worst economic crisis in seven decades. And days after, thousands of protesters stormed the president's official residence and office. His successor, Ranil Vikrame Singhe, was sworn in as acting president of Sri Lanka on July 15. Sri Lanka's economic crisis is a result of several factors, including COVID-19, which battered its tourism-reliant economy and slashed remittances from workers overseas, rising oil prices, populist tax cuts and a seven-month ban on the import of chemical fertilizers last year that devastated agriculture. Scores of Hindu devotees in Nepal and India thronged the banks of sacred rivers to take a holy dip and offered prayers to mark Janai and Shravan Purnima, celebrated on the full moon day of holy monsoon month of Shravan. The occasion is considered a very auspicious time by Hindus to initiate and accomplish significant activities. A large number of Hindu devotees gathered on the embankments of the holy Bhagmati River in Nepal to offer prayers on the occasion of Janai Purnima, the festival of threads observed on a full moon day of auspicious monsoon month of Shavan. On this occasion, the Takdharis, Brahmans, Chetris and Vaishyas performed their annual rituals of changing Janu, sacred thread which is worn across their chest after having a haircut and a bath also known as Shavan Snan. Similarly, young priests also got initiated at the Bhagavat Sanyas Ashram Gurukul, a hermitage school near the Pashupatina temple where ancient education is imparted to children. The young student took holy bath and chanted hymns and prayers to mark the occasion. The full moon day was also celebrated across neighboring India as hundreds of devotees took a holy dip in Ganges River and offered prayers on Friday. According to Hindu belief, bathing in Ganges River and other sacred water bodies on full moon day washes away all sins and leads to salvation. On this day, some devotees also observe fast. <laughs> और गंगा स्नान हम लोग आए हैं बहुत 
और गंगा स्नान करके यहाँ दान दक्षिणा करना चाहिए According to the Hindu belief, the full moon day is considered a very auspicious time to initiate and to accomplish significant activities as the luminous fullness of the moon represent abundance and generous blessings. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.